Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's really exciting seeing so many people in the room. You really picked the nerve uh, artificial intelligence. And I'd like to show you the new kit on the block, even if it's already commercially available. It's a system from uh, Pentax called Discovery, and I've been using it now for three weeks. The system comes as a monitor itself, and uh, there's a computer embedded, and it uh, helps you to detect polyps. It's not about characterization, but about detection. And again, it's uh, uh, Pentax uh, uh, part of the Hoya group. How do we use it? And uh, we just have discussed about the delay. And you see here the monitor uh, where the polyp, already visible, is also detected by uh, discovery. But you also see the normal monitor, which I think because of legal issues, it's always important also to have your normal monitor. Uh, then you see here that there is a polyp, but if you uh, go closer, you see that the system uh, somehow uh, at the beginning was irritated because the polyp is a little bit bigger uh, than the first view. There's a flat uh, part below of it, but this was also um, displayed. I show you some of the examples, and you see here on the dateline that they are all from February. Uh, now the um, system has somehow improved and updated. Now you see a blue square, and also the sensitivity is maybe a little bit less, uh, but it uh, has a higher rate to identify lesions here for sure. This is a hyperplastic lesion, uh, which is centered here, uh, but it does not differentiate between um, non-neoplastic and neoplastic polyps. Here we could argue this is a fold, but this is a submucosal lesion which was also correctly uh, displayed uh, by the system. Uh, the monitor itself has no recording possibilities, so what I did, I just recorded uh, the video and have sent it to, uh, to the company again to create those uh, videos, and that was also a decision to really help uh, the examiner only during the procedure, uh, and uh, then it's decision by the endoscopist uh, whether she or he then decide to do some biopsies or endoscopic resections. However, I feel that it, there's a need to do also the recordings. Then some false positive results here. You see some stool remnants uh, that was displayed as a polyp, but I think uh, with our uh, human eye, it was easy to identify it as a false uh, positive uh, result. One of the issues with artificial intelligence is it can only be as good as much uh, mucosa is displayed. And that's why uh, we are combining uh, artificial intelligence uh, regularly with the GI system. You are maybe aware of the GI system. It's just a balloon at the distal tip of uh, the endoscope. The endoscope is uh, a normal endoscope, but the balloon becomes part of that endoscope. So it's uh, permanently mounted. You insufflate the balloon during withdrawal. If you do not need it, you just desufflate the balloon, but you have also an anchoring mechanism so you can anchor your endoscope in front of a polyp, which also ease the endoscopic uh, resection. You need a little bit less air because, oh, excuse me, the air is captured in front of the balloon, so it seems that uh, it looks a little bit like it would be an overinsufflation of the colon, but we made a study randomized controlled trial uh, with about 1,000 patients showing that you have a significantly increase in the adenoma detection rate, and that was very similar to the AI results you have uh, um, heard in the first talk that also more flat lesions and more advanced lesions could be identified. And uh, these are, uh, this is just one uh, video to show you. I just recorded with, uh, uh, with my iPhone, and you see it's a little bit overexpanded. You still see the hostile folds, uh, but uh, because there's more mucosa exposed, um, there might be also a higher probability to identify polyps. Also, this one we uh, can all recognize, but there might be a higher probability uh, by using then artificial intelligence. Uh, the clinical data, I do not have as many as my speakers uh, before. There's only one study so far which will be presented at DDW 2020 from the University of Erlangen uh, from Germany and also during the ESGE dates. You see the uh, over 115,000 colonoscopic images was kind of uh, the learning phase. 
and then in the analysis of uh, the performance was then done on 45 uh, videos in that studies. And uh, you see here the per polyp analysis and the per frame analysis. I think this is something for our future uh, trials where we uh, really have to differentiate because the per polyp analysis is very high here with 100%, but the definition was that more than 60 frames were recognized as having a polyp within that sequence. If you do a per frame analysis, then the sensitivity was lower with about 90% and the specificity of 80%. I'm sure this uh, great meeting will be held again and uh, I hope that I can <laughs> present to you next year some of the prospective data which are ongoing. Uh, but again, it's a new uh, kit on the block. It's already commercially available and first data indicating that there's a high sensitivity for polyp detection it's not characterizing yet. Thank you very much.